Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. And today's video is for my fellow Jamaicans, especially those who are traveling around. I remember when I visited Jamaica a few years ago, somebody was giving me a lift and we were going from Spanish town to, to Christiana. And he was speeding down the road anyway. He said to me, man, are you hungry? So I said, but you've just passed the place. And he said, don't worry, man. And he reversed, and he reversed at a, such a speed on this highway, you know. I said, are you allowed to do that? And he said, don't worry, man, no worry. <laughs> anyway, he stopped off, and he got some um, jerk chicken. Fortunately, there was nobody coming behind and there was no accident or anything. But it, it, it reminds me of why um, Jamaica has now jumped on the bandwagon or is keeping up with the Joneses with their surveillance cameras. So apparently, Jamaica is now has installed 450 surveillance cameras in Kingston, um, 490 surveillance cameras in Kingston, um, 80 in Ocho Rios, 120 in Montego Bay, 38 in Maypen and 30 in Mandeville. This is according to the Minister of Transport and Mining, Robert Montague. He passed the framework. So what's going to happen now is that these cameras are primarily installed to monitor and record accidents. Apparently, there's been 85 fatalities of motorcyclists in particular. Motorcyclists are getting on their bike. They think it's easy to ride. They don't have experience. They haven't been going to training school. They don't have safety equipment. And so another law that's being brought into place is that anybody who's selling motorbikes must sell the um, safety equipment with them. And the motorcyclist must attend a training school and have a certificate. So it's no more jumping on your bike now and getting on the road and think you can drive because it's not that easy. Jamaica has a terrible reputation of driving really, really wild. I remember my experiences on Jamaican roads. You know what I do? I get in the back and I crouch down and I don't look because the way they take bends, you know, in the UK, when you drive, when you're approaching a bend, you, you flash, especially at night, you flash. So, so the oncoming car knows that somebody is coming. Not in Jamaica. They're on a bend and they're going at top speed. And you're like, oh my God. Me personally, I have to duck down and pray and hope that I get back safe. And I have got back safe. Thank God. But these surveillance cameras is to curtail the traffic violations and, you know, speeding and all that kind of stuff. So Jamaica is definitely getting on board with all of these things. And yeah, um, I'll just I just wrote out a couple of notes. I didn't write out the whole newspaper article because I'm putting it underneath and I wanted to keep this short. My videos have been getting quite long these days. So this is only notes. Um, hundreds of surveillance cameras installed on the on the little island of Jamaica. Minister of Tra Transport and Mining, Honourable Robert Montague, has passed the framework and approximately 490 traffic cameras have been installed across Kingston. 80 in Ocho Rios, 120 in Montego Bay, 38 in Maypen and 30 in Mandeville. License plate reading technology geared towards recording vehicles in traffic offence violations, Road Traffic Act regulation sanctions. Yeah, you're going to be sanctioned for any kind of breach of the Road Traffic Act and regulation. Um, enforcing um, legislation components of the National Road Safety Policy. Um, so they're out to catch any violations at all. Um, yeah, 84 persons lost their lives on motorcycle crashes. That's the highest of fatalities to date. They're out to catch those who are not licensed. So you need to be licensed, guys. You know, a lot of times, like I said, you know, in Jamaica and probably other Caribbean countries, um, we tend to um, not necessarily live by the rules. But not living by the rules is not going to get you anywhere now. You need to get on board, get your house in order and get your things in check. Um, 
yeah, I said most of the cyclists, cyclists need to have learned at training school. Um, person selling bikes will be required to sell safety equipment with them. You know, yesterday I was on the um, M1 and um, as I was driving up, there's about four motorcyclists within a couple of minutes of each other. And they're supposed to occupy um, the lane like a car would. They're supposed to be equivalent to a car if they're driving on the motorway. Not these, because we were in traffic. These motorcyclists were driving on the line in between two cars. So if a car is going to change a light lane, he's not going to expect a motorcyclist to be going down that lane. And that's a similar situation. Even though the motorist is not to blame most of the time, you know, we're being penalised because they brought up new laws to protect motorcyclists. And um, I was going to read that, but I don't even know where I put the piece of paper now about the new law. But, um, yeah, I can't find it. Anyway, they're protecting motorcyclists. So, you know, they sometimes they do avoid the blind spot on your mirror. This is in the UK now. Um, so you do really need to be careful. And even though motorcyclists are only around 1% of the UK's vehicle traffic, bike riders suffer around 14% of the total of serious injuries and death on the road. And that is why they take risks. They speed in between cars. They're frustrating. They're annoying. They think they have a right sometimes. You know, and, you know, why don't they follow the uh, the regulation? Everybody wants to go where they're going. Everybody wants to get home or to their destination. So a cyclist shouldn't have more right than a motor vehicle just because they're more slender and just because they can zip in between cars and move in between cars on a motorway. They shouldn't be allowed to do that because that is why they have accidents. And then the motorcyclist is the one who's penalised for it, for not taking due care and attention. It shouldn't be that way. Um, accidents involving irresponsible motorcyclists. If you're lucky enough to be involved in, and unlucky enough to be involved in an accident with a biker, there is a high probability that you will be in a better condition than they are. At the scene of the accident, don't remove the biker's helmet if he or she appears to be severely injured. If the accident is less damaging, treat it as you would by any traffic accident on the road. Motorbike accidents and claims are as standard as anyone else who is using the road, so make sure you get as much information at the scene as possible. Always obtain the driver's registration plate as well as their name, address and contact number. If there are any witnesses, get them to provide details too. You should, should you wish to claim against the biker in future, these witnesses will be vitally important to your case. If you require medical attention, keep a note of the medical visits and what occurred there. Again, this may help you claim against the biker in future. Ideally, you will never be involved in such a collision, but if you do, it's important to know how to deal with the situation. But ideally, avoiding it in the first place is the best approach. Either you or the rider may employ the services of a motorcycle accident lawyer, and they'll be able to advise you further of the situation. So that's all for now. So you drivers who've been getting away with driving mad, mad pandood. You can't do it again. You have to drive safely, responsible, responsibly, and be accountable for your actions. So, go in peace. Enough respect.